to this uh, Thursday evening training from wherever you are. We are going to have a very exciting time. It's very, very cold here in Pretoria. But I'm sure after this meeting, we'll all have very warm hearts and go and share our business to the rest of the world. I would like to invite our first speaker. She is my wife, my girlfriend, the founder of our business. And uh, she's going to take us through the session of cancer care. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, at least know somebody who has had cancer or a relative or a friend or somebody in the home. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Betty to take us a session on cancer care. You need to unmute. Mm, it's not unmuted yet. Is that, uh, am I audible? Yeah, now it's, it's audible. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us this uh, Thursday evening. And uh, it was a delight to hear that intro from Pascal. Thank you very much, Pascal. And let me also welcome you for our training this evening. It has been a while since we had training together and I'm happy that we are back on today. And as you will have heard from Pascal and also in your invitation today, I was going to share about cancer support. And uh, I think as Pascal also mentioned, most of us have come across or have uh, had experience with uh, a friend, a family member, uh, people that we know going through this uh, illness. And it is an illness that tends to strike fear in our hearts. And it is with good cause because it is an illness that is not easily cured. There is much research that is being uh, done to try to cast more light into it. And I'm sure that uh, you know that our scientific advisory board is always at the forefront of trying to find out the best ways in which our products can help to support people who have this illness or who are trying to be proactive and to prevent it. So uh, as we get into this, the first thing I wanted to mention is that any cell in anyone's body is potentially cancerous and can become a cancer if it is exposed to a chronic trigger. So that should make not make us fearful, but just make us understand that uh, from what is known now is that any cell is potentially cancerous, but the cancer has a trigger and the trigger has to be chronic. So it's not that once in most cases, it's not that one single exposure is going to lead us to have cancer, but if we have a chronic exposure to the trigger, which are normally called carcinogens, then we may find that we actually um, trigger the cancer that is lying latent within us. So we, with that bit of information, I think our next point of interest would be what are the triggers? And there, there are many unknown triggers. However, there are a few which are, are well known. The first and best known and best researched is nicotine from tobacco smoking. So we know that uh, by smoking cigarettes, uh, tobacco cigarettes, we, we inhale the, pro the which is nicotine, and this has been as well established to be a carcinogen. A second item that has been identified as a trigger is obesity, or what is today being referred to as metabolism. Metabolic syndrome refers to a group of, of uh, symptoms that uh, show that our metabolism is not working well. And the symptom of this is that we grow quite overweight and tend to have a very large belly in, in uh, excess of 100 centimeters in the case of men and 90 centimeters in the case of women. So that is one of the symptoms when we start gaining weight 
around the waistline because that weight is to be covering and smothering some of our very important organs that are in our abdomen. So obesity has also been established as one of the triggers of, uh, of uh, cancer. And also remember that obesity is often related to quite a number of unhealthy lifestyle choices. And the, so there is a link there. Then the third triggers that have been identified is certain disease causing microbes. And these ones may not directly cause cancer, but they are associated with increasing our risk of uh, certain cancers. So that their presence in our bodies may not be causing us a great deal of sickness, but that what acts as a trigger that is linked to certain cancers. So there are a number of them, but I'll just give three examples. The first one is the herpes virus, which has been linked to cervical cancer. And then hepatitis B and C viruses have also been linked to liver cancer. And then the bacterium H. pylori has been linked to stomach cancer. So H. pylori is a bacterium that is also linked to stomach ulcers. And uh, fr from there, it can also it has also been found to increase the risk of stomach cancers. So apart from the pathogen, uh, a fourth trigger is uh, certain chemicals. Uh, if I can give the example of asbestos fibers, maybe some of you who are younger may not be aware of this because this substance is no longer in use. But the older people will remember that there was a time when asbestos was being used for roofing and piping and so on. So the, the fibers of uh, this asbestos, when inhaled, can trigger off, uh, especially for a prolonged period, can trigger off lung cancer. Then other chemicals are uh, alcohol, especially prolonged heavy usage of alcohol, as well as the uh, frequent ingestion of processed meats. So processed meats will be all those meats that have been packaged and processed. They look a little different from the normal meat. So you'll have things like uh, polonies and salamis and these types of things. We should limit the ingestion of them because they are um, the chemicals that are used in processing them increase our risk of cancer. Then the last one I'll mention as a trigger is radiation exposure. So we have, if we are exposed to certain kinds of uh, radiation, it can also act as a, a trigger of uh, cancer in our bodies. So a chronic trigger is a problem for a specific reason. When we have a, a chronic trigger, and remember I say that a single exposure is not a chronic trigger. A chronic trigger means repeated exposures. And the, what it does is that it leads to an accumulation of byproducts of cellular activities, uh, which normally will hear also being referred to as oxidative stress. So oxidative stress is a term that is used to, to refer to the accumulation of the byproducts of the activities of our cells. And when they, they accumulate, and uh, it means that we are not able, our bodies are not able to detoxify from them adequately. So when they accumulate, they cause a damage because of course they are byproducts. So it means that they are kind of uh, poisonous or toxic to our systems. So the, their toxicity leads to damage to our cells and especially to the DNA. So this accumulation of byproducts will lead to a damage to a DNA. And I just want to uh, branch off a bit to say that remember one of our baseline supplements, which is TreeNN, is very important because of this very reason. I always say that uh, even if I don't mention in our product recommendation that we should have TreeNN, TreeNN is always a good supplement to have in our recommendation because of its ability to help our cells to function better and to detoxify, absorb useful nutrients. So when our cells are overwhelmed with the uh, accumulation of uh, the byproducts, then it's to a damage to the cell as well as the DNA. When the DNA is damaged, then remember that the DNA carries the information and the instructions for the cells and the way they should behave. 
When the DNA is damaged as a result of these chronic triggers, then the cell is going to start malfunctioning because there is a damage to its instruction. It's as if you have got an, a faulty instruction manual, then of course problems are going to result. So the way in which the malfunctioning can manifest itself, the cell stops obeying the instructions on how, how and when to multiply. So the cells will begin multiplying very vigorously, disobeying the, the normal instructions, which would be telling them when to multiply and when not to multiply. And this will result in abnormal growths, which we normally refer to as tumors. When the tumor is cancerous, it is described as malignant. Sometimes you may have a growth which is not cancerous and is referred to as benign. So the, as you can see, there, there's that link there that uh, the DNA is damaged, which means the instructions manual for our cell is damaged. And as a result of uh, bad instruction, the cell starts multiplying abnormally, leading to abnormal growths. So uh, turning to ourselves as the new life distributors, it is important that we realize that by the time the cancer has been diagnosed, it, we are already in serious trouble. So our best approach is to educate those in our sphere of influence about the importance of uh, making healthy lifestyle choices and also being proactive in making these choices so as to prevent rather than to treat. As always, you know, we our supplements are best as a means of preventing the trouble because they work with our body to maintain health. And uh, the, the thing I also wanted to mention is that um, this proliferation of cancers that we are noticing today that almost everybody knows someone who, someone or many people who have, have cancer or who have died from cancer is, has time. In fact, as, uh, long, as early as 1950s, it was thought that we Africans were immune to certain types of cancer because they did not appear among us, which means that this increase in the, in the appearance of cancer in our midst is linked to certain changes in our diet and in our cultural behavior. The good thing about but the good thing about it is that it means that we can change and ad adjust our lifestyle so that we go back to what we used to be, which is that we had less of the appearance of these cancers. Because I think it's quite distressing that uh, apart from cancer, there are so many other illnesses which have appeared of late and are now quickly becoming epidemics. So the next point I want to bring up is that as distributors, we have to be faithful and I mean, we have to be truthful about our products so that we do not mislead people that we can cure or we can do things which we are not able to do. So we, we give correct and truthful information about what our products would be able to do. And when we are, our products are not able to help We choose from good proteins, wild caught fish, traditional meats and uh, non-processed meats. We also avoid overly processed carbohydrates and make better carbohydrate choices, uh, which are minimally processed. And then uh, we also recommend things like plenty of vegetables, whether we eat them fresh or cooked. We try to minimize uh, very sweet uh, fruits because some of the fruits have now been uh, mm, they have been uh, hybridized to become very, very sweet, which means they, ha they tend to be not too good for us, especially if we have got already metabolic problems. Then we also recommend good fats, for example, those you find in a highly recommended fruit like avocado, and uh, things like olives and coconuts. These ones provide us with good fats, as well as nuts. And then, of course, 
We also would want to eliminate or severely limit harmful um, items, for example, example, sugar. Refined sugar is now considered a harmful item, as well as factory fats, which are being linked more and more to lifestyle-related illnesses. So those are some of the points that we can bring up as we educate those around us about avoiding triggers to illnesses, including uh, cancer, but also other lifestyle-related illnesses. Then turning my attention now to our new life supplements that we can recommend in our cancer support products. The first and the, the best is, of course, phytodefense, which is a, a, a preparation of, of three different types of uh, products. We have carotenoid complex, we have flavonoid complex, and we have cruciferous plus. This powerful trio is uh, plant-based and it has phytonutrients and antioxidants, which help our bodies to fight against any possible uh, problems that are starting to develop that could lead to cancer. And the way they, in which they work is uh, number one, they will neutralize cancer triggers. So if we have been exposed to triggers, these phytonutrients that are found in phytodefense help to neutralize the triggers themselves. Of course, this does not imply that uh, we should now expose ourselves to triggers. It just means that we have got a means to help us to fight against uh, the effects of the carcinogens. Then the next way in which they work is to neutralize the harmful byproducts that may be accumulating in our cells. Once they neutralize them, then of course they reduce the accumulation and help our bodies to detox from uh, abnormal growths. Then the third one is that these phytonutrients also help to heal damaged cells and damaged DNA. So by, by working in this three-pronged approach, the phytodefense supplements are going to help our bodies to work so that our body becomes inhospitable to the growth of cancer. So this, this is a uh, one of the best products that we can recommend for this, but it is not the only one. We also would recommend omega-3 salmon oil, which helps, as we well know, because we repeat it very often, it helps in reducing inflam inflammation, systemic inflammation within our body. We know that inflammation is an important part of, uh, of our body's immunity, but when it becomes excessive and chronic and systemic, then it can cause problems. Omega-3 salmon oil will also help to help our bodies to reduce oxidative stress. So that is that accumulation of uh, the cellular byproducts. It has been shown to be beneficial if uh, someone is undergoing treatment for cancer. By using omega-3 salmon oil, they, it has been shown that there is a positive response to the cancer treatment. And it also reduces the reaction that uh, the body will have against the chemo that is used for treating uh, cancer. So that is omega-3 salmon oil, which is our second recommendation. And then our third recommendation is going to be garlic allium complex, which is uh, useful in uh, cellular repair. And also it slows down the growth of tumors. If there are tumors starting to grow, then garlic allium complex helps in uh, slowing down their growth. And by slowing down the growth of a tumor, of course, it uh, helps, it gives our body the opportunity to fight against this, uh, these growths and uh, eliminate them. So if cancer has already, been, uh, has already been diagnosed, our products can still be used to support the body in its fight against it. Remember, our bodies are always working very hard to remain healthy. And so we should not give up even when there has been a diagnosis. We should supply the body with everything that it needs to combat. And in the hope that together with the treatment, we are going to be able to win this battle against this uh, uh, fearsome illness. Then uh, looking at, at uh, another point is that during chemo, we, when uh, we have got someone who has already been diagnosed and is undergoing treatment with chemotherapy, 
we will recommend that they have a protein-rich uh, diet. And in this case, we'll recommend Neolife Shake. The, if they have, um, uh, just to mention, sometimes when people are under, being treated with chemotherapy, they may have sores in their mouths, which makes eating difficult. So the Neolife Shake is going to be useful at providing them with a protein source, which does not require a lot of chewing. And so we can make a, a smoothie using the NutriShake, or if the person is not having a big problem with sores, some pieces of fruit can also be added to the NutriShake so as to supply them with um, a rich uh, meal, which is easy to take and which is going to supply them with uh, the nutrients that re they require in addition to the protein from the Neolife Shake. Then Aloe Vera Plus will also help during chemotherapy to soothe the system and to reduce nausea, which is also usually associated with people undergoing chemotherapy. Then once chemo has been completed, that once the person has had their chemo, in detoxing the body from chemotherapy, the chemotherapy drugs. Uh, probably you'll be aware that the chemotherapy drugs work by killing the cancer. Unfortunately, they may kill some of the healthy cells as well. So it is important to help the body to detox from the chemotherapy drugs. And that is why we only recommend the beta guard after the chemo has done its work. And uh, maybe you are aware that the person who formulated BetaGuard for the Neolife uh, company is Dr. Arthur Fast, who was a researcher that was specifically looking for ways to help the body recover from chemotherapy. And he put together this marvelous product, BetaGuard, whose work is to help with the detox. Then we also recommend Calmag or Magnesium to help to repair any nerve damage that might have resulted from chemotherapy. So you may find some of the people complaining of uh, having episodes of a lot of pain and numbness or tingling, which is the result of some nerve damage that can result from chemotherapy. And Calmag or magnesium as a standalone supplement, the magnesium complex can help it, the body to heal this nerve damage that causes pain. Then, once the, all the treatment has been done, the, person, the cancer sufferer can continue using phytodefense and omega-3 salmon oil as a long-term supplement just in order to mitigate against a, re, uh, a recurrence of the cancer. Because, of course, we know that it's very distressful that sometimes the cancer does come back. And so we, we need to create the awareness that they should not abandon supplementing with phytodefense omega, and omega-3 salmon oil even after they have uh, been given a, a clean bill. In addition to that, they should continue to make those healthy choices and uh, avoid any triggers that might uh, reactivate the, the cancer. And uh, also, we would recommend that they incorporate things like exercise and uh, stress resolution to help them to maintain the the state of the cancer free state so that is what i wanted to share with you about cancer support of course there is much more information as always and our se my sessions are usually with the aim of starting you on the path of getting better informed about um the, these topics that we talk about. Then uh, with a few minutes remaining, I wanted to mention uh, what we can do about some of the microbes that have that increase our risk of uh, developing cancer. You'll remember in the beginning, I mentioned certain microbes of which one was hepatitis B and C. So these are, uh, are caused by viruses. The virus itself may not, the illness itself may not show a very strong um, illness in us, but the presence of those viruses can actually make uh, uh, increase our risk of developing a cancer. And for that reason, we should try to get rid of them. So with hepatitis B, it is important to visit the doctor so that we get antiviral medication. In addition to that, we should uh, 
help our liver to be healthy by eliminating foods like alcohol and refined sugar, which usually put a high stress on our liver. And if already we are having a hepatitis B or C infection, our liver already has got uh, challenges to deal with. So we should not add things like alcohol, especially excessive use of it and excessive use of sugar. We should limit or eliminate, better still to eliminate them altogether. Then to deal with hepatitis B, which can become chronic, we should uh, commit to a long-term use of better guard, cruciferous plus, and chelated zinc. Then uh, the, other, my, uh, the other pathogen that I mentioned is H. pylori, which is a bacterium that uh, can be found in the stomach and causes stomach ulcers. It, has, it is one of the, the, the microbes that increases the risk of stomach uh, cancers. So therefore, we need to deal with it, first of all, by a visit to the doctor so that he can prescribe the appropriate antibiotic to kill the bacterium. But in addition to that, because ulcers do tend to recur, the recurrence can be as a result of, uh, of some poor lifestyle habits which we should address. So for example, we should try to eat a healthy diet, avoid processed meats, which are also linked to problems in the gut. And in addition to that, we can recommend supplements that help to heal and restore the integrity of the gut, which has, ha which has been ulcerated. So the gut, which has had ulcers, needs to heal and becomes, uh, become uh, more, more, uh, less uh, damaged. And this, of course, will not take a short time, depending, of course, on how badly the ulcers had affected uh, the gut. So for that, we'll recommend garlic allium complex, which also works against uh, microbes and friendly microbes that might be in our gut. We'll also recommend chelated zinc, which helps in the healing of the gut. If you have it in your market, we'll also recommend Acidophilus Plus, and um, we'll recommend Vitamin C and Aloe Vera Plus will also help, especially when the ulcer is still active. It helps to soothe the, the gut. So I see that uh, my half hour is over. I want to thank you very much for the time that you have uh, afforded me. I hope that the session has been useful in informing